What's going on everyone? Jeremy here from The Quartering. I think I've got two dose, two, maybe three videos. I don't know. I've been doing like three videos a day. So if you've missed anything from the past week, I've covered all sorts of stuff from the future being in doubt for um, Dice LA after underperforming on Battlefield 5 and bonuses getting slashed at EA. Talked about a Kotaku writer being exposed for her fake kidnapping stories and so much more. So enjoy your April 20th. If you're looking for something to just chill to and listen to the sultry sounds of my voice, there are plenty of videos from this week for you to check out. But I want to get into something today. I want to give you a trigger warning. That's right. Riot Games has a new logo and it's offensive. I bet you didn't know that. I bet you didn't know why you need to be offended. But thankfully, I'm here to help translate the blue check marks of Twitter to the normal person's vernacular. So if we want to go back a little bit in history, Riot was at the center of an expose put out by Kotaku about a bro-ish, a bro frat boy culture where, of course, Tons of anonymous victims who never quit their job and never sued the company were offended by things that happened at the company. And I'm not saying they didn't happen. I'm just saying in the era of Me Too, where we have wild and grandiose uh, accusations that always end up seeming to just disappear into the aether, uh, I'm kind of skeptic of any time something comes up. But a brief overview is... They had an article a while ago about the inside the culture of sexism at Riot Games. And this was, of course, done by Cecilia, your your main SJW at Kotaku. And you had a very, very long article. Kotaku had spoken over the course of several months. Kotaku has spoken with 28 current and former Riot employees, many of whom came forward with stories that echo Lacey's. Now, what was Lacey's story? On uh, one day, and, and this is this is one of those classic i'll take things that didn't happen for 800 alex but let's go into Lacey's story now one day Lacey conducted an experiment after an idea she really believed fell flat in a meeting she asked a male colleague to present the same idea to the same group a couple of days later he was skeptical but she insisted that he give it a shot Lo and behold, the week after that, he went in, presented it exactly as I did, and the whole room was like, oh my gosh, this is amazing. His face turned beet red, and he had tears in his eyes. <laughs> they just didn't respect woman. <laughs> okay, first of all, I will come out right up front here and say, I don't believe this ever happened. And if it did, it didn't happen the same way this happened. Also, we don't know if that male counterpart had more credibility in the company. We don't know that it was presented exactly the same. This is just hearsay. It would never stand up in a court. And of course, they go on. I mean, this is sounds so, so, so sad. We aggressively, they said, enforce a zero tolerance policy on discrimination, harassment, and general toxicity. It's incredibly important for our leaders to embody this commitment. And they went on and on and the bros before hoes thing is so ingrained, even though they claim it to be a meritocracy. Again, none of these things are ever provable. And look, I'm not saying that guys can't be dismissive of women. And maybe some of the things in this story are true, but it just reads like the same BS. Look, if you think you're legitimately being discriminated against at your job, which is illegal, you should press charges. None of these women did that. They wrote anonymous letters to Kotaku. Why? You, we're left to wonder. We're really left to wonder. Maybe, maybe they weren't as good at their job as they thought they were. Maybe they had a axe to grind with Riot. Now, that isn't to absolve Riot Games of particular behaviors, but we don't know. We weren't there, but that doesn't stop Kotaku from putting these articles out. And of course... Uh, when they have their gamers first culture, that means they're uh, backing toxic gamers. Now, over the past few months, Riot Games has been trying to rebrand themselves. Uh, why? I don't know. This article forced them to hire like a diversity and inclusion manager, which is a BS position uh, that is not required. But things like that. And they've been really trying to uh, win the favor of games media. I'm surprised 
to hear that because I doubt it had any real effect on Riot Games. Now, if they came out to say that they were having problems hiring people, okay, maybe that would be true. But given the fact that there is a surplus of game developers and we know that most of these accusations are probably baseless, I doubt they've had any major issues. Now, when I say there's a surplus of game developers, I know many of my viewers are game developers and that shouldn't be seen as a slight to you. I'm just saying that uh, if we look at the reality of the situation, would these companies be able to abuse their developers with crunch periods and everything like that and be able to absorb these stress casualties so easily if there weren't a long line of people desperate to get into the field? I think just like IT was when I was in college, when uh, I was in high school, they said, get into IT, you're going to use a six figure job, no matter what, anywhere you go. By the time I had graduated college, most of these people that were allegedly making a hundred to $180,000 a year were lucky to be making 40 to 45,000 as more and more people outsourced IT and computers became entirely replaceable. You didn't need somebody to fix it all the time. So a lot of people in the early 2000s, I think, got sucked into this machine to learn about how great game development was you had ridiculous schools like full sale charging enormous amounts of money and uh, benefiting from the government over lending students burying kids in debt and now you have a ton of good people with a good skill but unfortunately there's too many of them and hopefully the market will correct and you all will get better treatment but i think that's a big part of it nonetheless riot tries to rebrand with this new logo uh pewdiepie lawsuit in uh soon now uploading april fool's joke with internet explorer um you know reminds me of mobile games company so people don't like it does it come with less harassment uh it's a fist of domestic violence i mean people are memeing on it i don't know i mean i don't really care about a company logo to be honest with you that's not where this story goes so from here we see Monte Cristo, a uh, well-known uh, caster for Overwatch League, and apparently has a history of um, having an axe to grind with uh, Riot Games. Now, shout out to Rod Breslau, who is a, 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 a lefty from another mother. Uh, oftentimes, I think, by the way, at Slashers, always worth a follow. His reporting is above reproach. He breaks things. He doesn't have a, a strong bias. Um, and uh, I guess that's just a backhanded, I don't want to be backhanded, but a backwards, or both these people, Rod Breslau and Richard Lewis are worth follows on Twitter. Good dudes. Uh, so anyway, I want to point out that uh, Monte Cristo here has in his Twitter bio, uh, Overwatch League analyst, uh, co-host demon feasting on fanboy tears and brand ambassador so let me start by saying this the only people that i hear use that language fanboy tears are ridiculous sjw's uh, i don't hear you know they have the little mugs with fanboy tears like uh that blue-haired land whale that who shall not be named uh and so you already know that uh, this dude is an antagonistic guy who has some sort of slight against the gaming community. Now, unless it's some sort of inside joke, but I doubt it based on the comments that he made. So then he goes on to say, Riot double downs on their doubles down on their frat boy fist bump imagery in spite of the problems with company culture. Rebranding was an opportunity to show the change they purport to want. But as with everything else, it's clear that they have no interest in actually reinventing themselves. Ban the fist emoji, everybody. Don't use it. It's toxic frat boy material. And of course, Rod steps in to say the logo is pretty junk, but I'm not exactly convinced you care so much about the symbolism of the logo at being odds with trying to stop harassment at the company other than just taking a shot at Riot. Uh, Richard Lewis comes in to say, now apply this thought process to your endless tweets trying to dig at Thorin and you'll be close to an epiphany. Boom! <laughs> My dudes! Good job, guys. Lamau, now Thorin constantly says stupid stuff all the time. I have a great time pointing that out. You've at least got 10 stupid Thorin tweets above the symbolism of the first logo. Although... Always welcome to see you. you're helping your buddy, as I'm sure he needs it. Oh, Rod. 
you brought him up. So these are esports uh, bros getting uh, a little spicy. But he goes on to say, fist bumping is a massive part of riot corporate culture. It replaced the handshake entirely for them. By the way, I think the fist bump, you know, unfortunately, I got to say it is probably another meme that PewDiePie killed. Uh, it's it's you know, I find myself doing it a lot less. Um, but again, I don't know that that's what their intention is. But if it is OK, if it is and it's such a big part of their culture, then wouldn't it make sense to be in the logo and fist bumping? may have started out as a broski thing 10 years ago, but I see women doing it all the time. I mean, I'm on a bowling team with two females and we dap it up all the time. We, I mean, this is not an exclusively male thing, unlike exclusively games, which is a great website about video games that doesn't talk about stupid crap like this, but you end up with more... I find it interesting that they chose to keep the frat boy fist bump logo considering the problems they've had with company culture. As with everything else, it's pretty clear they don't want to change. So perhaps Monte Cristo would have wanted them to have a vagina as their logo. Would that have a, a, like a pair of, how about a woman breastfeeding? Would that have been uh, more appropriate for their logo? I mean, you admit uh, that fist bumping is a part of what people do at Riot. And I'm pretty sure that the fist bump is a gender. It's not something that uh, is exclusively for men or exclusively for women. So, you know, as you can say what you want about their logo, I don't really care. I, I don't have an eye for art. I'm more of a, uh, I'm more of a um, Excel spreadsheet guy. But the idea that you would be so triggered by by a logo is pretty pathetic. Sounds a lot like sour grapes to me. But I'm curious to hear if you, you the viewer, are offended by the uh, the fist bump. I'm sorry, I'm putting it back up. Trigger warning for everybody. I hope you really enjoyed this video. We've got a couple of memes today, some lighthearted uh, uh, poop posts. So I hope I helped pass the weekend for you, and uh, we'll talk to you again real soon.